So now it's more technical talk than theory. We're gonna talk about TilePy. So it's a tool for every time you have a poorly localized event in the sky, like a mainly gravitation waves or GRB detected by Fermi GBM, for example, or the news bomb GRM, we use this tool uh, in order <coughs> to tell our telescopes where to look in the sky. So the problem is that we are looking at transients. Transients are very uh, highly variable. So the emission usually tends to go down and very quickly, so we have to be quick. The events that we are looking at, like gravitation wave, they are very poorly localized. They can span hundreds of degrees in the sky. And comparing to a medium or small field of view telescope, we'll need infinite time to, to scan all these areas. And three, we have many telescopes at hand with different configuration in different places of the globe different field of views, different observation conditions. Some of them can observe with moonlight, some of them cannot. And we need to create a tool that can take into consideration this so it can be installed for any telescope. We're talking about ground-based telescopes. So we create a tile pie. Uh, for the three problems that I just mentioned, we have three solutions. So type I will allow the telescope to slew at the most probable region at the earliest time possible. It will also maximize the coverage of the whole area in the sky of interest. And it's a flexible tool that can be used for several telescopes and can be installed for different configuration, even for radio telescopes that can observe during the day. So let's start with the first thing. It's the time constraint. So we need so in, for that we need to consider observability constraint and visibility constraint. When you talk about observability, observability constraint, we say like the time when the telescope can observe. So it depends on the position of the moon and the sun in the sky. And the visibility constraint, it's about where the telescope can observe. So if, for example, some telescopes cannot slew to less than 60 degrees zenith angle, some telescopes can look, uh, they only have a small uh, area in the sky that can look because they are looking up. So here's an example. We have a gravitational wave event that arrived during this day at around 6 p.m. And the visibility and observation conditions for six, seven observatories are shown here. So you have the altitude of the source and this, this thick line here. You have the moon and the sun at, uh, altitude that defines the observation uh, window for each one of these uh, telescopes. And it's in this light uh, blue here. So for example, Hess can observe for a few hours starting with the arrival of the gravitational event. Mika can observe during all day because it's a radio telescope. But we have, in that case, we have to study the visibility of the source or the attitude of the source. And tile pile takes into, it starts by taking into consideration this. So when can we observe CTAO uh, north side? We'll have to wait a few hours, but even though the source is very low, so it cannot observe it, CTAO south can observe the source, but it has to wait many hours until midnight, so it will be able to start its observation. So all of that is taken into consideration. Then what we do, we need to maximize the coverage. So we have a gravitational wave localization map, which is a probability map. So for each pixel, uh, there's a probability in the sky to host the event. So what we do is we lower the resolution of this map in order to create this kind of grid in the sky that follows the gravitational gravitational wave map in the sky when it's when the earth is, up, is turning we create this uh, this grid where we define pointing centers <laughs> and depending on the field of view of the telescope we align many field of views on this grid and then we test each one of these uh, field of views for an integrated probability inside this region and we choose at this time the one that is the most uh, probable to host the event and we observe it, then we subtract from the gravitational wave, and then we do it again for the next observation slot. 
in an observation window, there are many observation slots. So this is the 2D strategy. This is if we're only using the information and the gravitational event map. But also we can use 3D strategies. For example, we can use galaxies that are in this region. Uh, and in, instead of trying to cover the whole area, we cover areas where there are galaxies at the distance of the event. So what we do is we have the gravitational wave uh, localization region, and we assign for each galaxy here that you can see in colors, a probability of hosting the event. The probability here is defined by the different colors. Then we align our grid that we create based on the gravitational wave. We do our test uh, uh, positions. And then instead of integrating the gravitational wave, sorry, the probability contained in the gravitational wave map, we integrate the probability contained in the galaxies. And we'll see that the best position here, for example, to observe at this time is here. We observe it, we subtract, and then we do it again. And this is how we maximize coverage. And three, how can we make it suitable for all kinds of telescopes? We create a flexible architecture where you have the core of the code, which is divided into three uh, stages, if you want, uh, three levels. Uh, the bottom level is the uh, tools for all the functions that we created for visibility, for probability computation. This is probably something that only the, one, uh, the people who are very deep in the code will use. The tiling determination, so the strategies are defined here using the functions that are in the lowest level, uh, uh, in the lowest level, and then the observation scheduling, it's like the script that parses all uh, the commands that will take the command in order to start uh, scheduling uh, an observation. What do we take into input? Uh, observation date. The heat peak sky map, so the map uh, of the probability region. And what makes the difference is the configuration file. So for each telescope, there's a configuration file. And <coughs> this is what makes these tools flexible. So you just need to change the configuration mm -hmm. file or the parameters in the configuration file, and you can schedule with different kinds of telescope. What it will give you is an observation summary, so a table with the different uh, start dates of observation, with the coordinates of the best observation possible, and uh, for each observation, the window that you can observe it. For example, if you have the best start date at 10 p.m., but at 10 p.m. it's cloudy, you cannot observe it. You have a window like this event is visible from uh, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., so you can know whenever you want to schedule your observation. We have extra features. So we have a toolkit. You can call it by tilepile.tools. Uh, whatever function you want to use in order to uh, help understand more uh, what's going on and help understand the observation summary. For example, uh, if you want to do deep exposures, if you want to rank uh, your observations, if you want to visualize your observation in a nice way, we have a toolkit also Assign, uh, assimilated to this code. So, first of all, we implemented TilePile in HES. We the team that's working on TilePile, so Monica, Mathieu, Fabian, and myself, uh, we are in the HES collaboration, and we started by uh, implementing it in the HES collaboration. So, from we receive VO events from all kinds of uh, observatories. We have here what we call the HES transient follow-up system that contains the TO alert system that handles the alert. And inside the TO alert system, we implement the TilePy. And TilePy is working and has since a few years now. And for example, it helped us to be the first ground-based instrument to collect data on 170817, even before the uh, counterpart was detected. So actually what happened is that the night started, TilePile told us to observe this location, we observed it, then another location, then five hours later, the counterpart was found, and actually, the first location that we observed this TilePile was where the counterpart was found a few hours later. We are using it in O2, we used it in O2 and O3 to follow up other kinds of events, binary black hole merger, new to start black hole mergers, and now we are using it in O4, and two days ago, we, for, for example, we observed uh, with us automatically 
without any human intervention because style pilot was implemented. Now I'll show some examples of the summary schedules that TilePile gives you and what TilePile can do. So here we take a GBM, GRB, just to change a bit about gravitation waves. It's very poorly localized in the sky. You can see the localization region here. And we say, okay, we are in La Palma. We have four LSTs, so four telescopes that wanna work independently. Each one of them has a four degree field of view. So let's see what it does. So type, we, we launch TilePy, and for each of the LSTs, you can see that TilePy makes them work together in order to cover efficiently the GRB localization here. We don't have information about uh, uh, galaxies here, so TilePy will, will try to cover the whole area the most efficiently possible. And you can see the coverage, the percentage of the provider that we are covering with time here. Now, another example is a gravitational wave uh, localization region is very bad, but this time we have a telescope in the north and a telescope in the south. So this is the case of CTAO, for example. And we, to make it even more difficult, we changed the field of views of each of the telescopes. We made CTAO south bigger than CTAO north, and we said schedule, and it started scheduling CTAO north, starts before, it starts covering <clears throat> the most probable uh, galaxies in this case, because this time we said we're gonna use galaxies because the event was close enough, and then CTAO south come to fill the gaps around the what CTAO north, or north already covered. And finally, to make it even more complicated, we have a gravitational wave here, this is actually a real event. This is the Newton star black hole merger that was discovered in uh, 03. It's well localized, but this time we said, okay, we have seven optical telescopes with small field of views and medium field of views. And we wanna observe and target the uh, uh, using the galaxies in this region. And actually, by, by, uh, in a few minutes uh, told us, uh, gave us this schedule here where we cover almost 100% of the galaxies in the region. Each telescope is using only the time limited to itself. And I forgot to tell you, each telescope also has a different observation duration, for example, for different exposure. For example, some telescopes need 10 minutes, some telescopes need one minute, and all of this is taken into consideration. And each one of the telescopes starts at different times. Some of them are in South Africa, some of them are in La Palma, some of them are in Hawaii. So they all work together. <clears throat> now the link with Astro Colibri. Taipal is implemented in Astro Colibri. Now I'll show you, I'll show you how. I just I, I will not do the live thing. I just took a screenshots from my cell phone because before we saw the web. Uh, now from your cell phone, if you go, uh, you have the event, you click on it. You go into this uh, here and you click on schedule and type and will run. And you have the, uh, the contours here. And for this event, when I was doing the slides, there was only, I was using HES and there was only one hour of observation. So we are, HES has a 30 minute exposure. So we can only do two observations. And you can see that has gave me these, uh, Taipa gave me these two observations here. Now, each one of these observations becomes an event by itself in Astro Colibri. So you can see the tiles here. Some of them are hidden uh, above. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I use HES or IST here. Uh, I think it's HES. And anyway, you can click on the tile and you can get all the features that Astro Colibri gives you on the visibility of the tile on uh, the uh, cone search around the tile or whatever you can do with Astro Colibri. Each tile becomes an event itself into Astro Colibri. So in conclusion, Tilepal is a tool for the optimization of spatial and temporal aspects of the follow-up of poorly localized transients like gravitational wave. Uh, it's flexible enough. It's uh, optimized or keep on optimizing it to make it even quicker. There are some ideas that we were discussing uh, in these two days to even improve the computation uh, time and everything. 
And Tilepile for now is implemented in HES, in LST. We are using it in the CTO collaboration to do the prospects for the future. And it's implemented in astroequilibrium being used by professional and amateur astronomers. This is the official website of Tilepile. I'll click on it just so I can show you what's on it. So a small introduction. If you want to know more about the algorithm, there's a paper here. The GitHub, uh, I will go into it. Our official paper is here. You can, if you ever use type, you can cite it. Let's go to GitHub, go to GitHub. So this is our GitHub. There's a readme to tell you how to install type. It's straightforward. You just, uh, you just uh, clone the directory and uh, with pip install, you can install it. It will soon be available on PyPy, Py, so you can like just tip install TylePy and it's done. And uh, it's open source, so anyone can access it. And I think that's the end of my presentation. How to go back? Okay, that's the end of my presentation.